It's Master Chef, and the knockouts continue. Bombi, I need this ravioli, please. Coming, Chef. They've waited long enough. Last night saw the first group battle it out in a pro kitchen. This is great stuff. You should be really proud of it, both of you. Thank you, Chef. Fumbi was sent home. Now, the second six are challenged to cook for the paying public for the first time. Have I burned this one? Because I think the butter's too hot. You're going to have to get another two on. This is where it gets really interesting. This is where you really learn how to step it up. I think he's completely mad for letting us into his kitchen. I do get quite stressed under a lot of immediate pressure, so I'm going to really try and keep that under control. Do you know what? It's actually really good fun. Honestly, this is mind-blowing stuff. Then renowned Michelin star chef Tom Kitchen returns. That's an outstanding plate of food. You should be very, very proud. At the end, for one of them, the competition will be over. Today, the amateur cooks will be pushed to their limits, cooking in their first professional kitchen. At Rue, at Parliament Square. Michelle Rue's second restaurant is run by head chef Steve Groves. We're wearing a lamb pink and a cod. Steve won MasterChef The Professionals in 2009 and worked his way up from sous chef at the renowned Mayfair restaurant Le Gavroche before becoming head chef at Parliament Square three years ago. The style of food here is very classically based. We follow French classics to a degree, but then we take a lot of inspiration from all over, really. The food here, I like it to appear quite simple on the plate, but there's a lot of kind of technique that goes in behind that to create that sharp look. This place means a lot to me. The reputation that we've built here is the pinnacle of my career so far. And, you know, we're letting six amateur chefs come in and trusting them with that reputation. We're not prepared to lower the standard. They're going to have to really be on top of their game. So excited, yet so terrified. <laughs> Having someone put their trust in you delivering their food is incredible. For me, with absolutely no culinary experience whatsoever, I'm just going to be chef, your chef, their chef, you know. I'm really just there to learn and learn and hopefully impress them. If you do what they ask, generally, you're OK. So if I can just do what they ask of me, hopefully I should be OK. Morning, guys. My name's Steve Groves. Uh, welcome to Rue at Parliament Square. So we're going to be doing a special tasting menu. You need to be responsible for one course. I'll show you how they all go, and then you'll be on your own, OK? So lots to do, so if you want to follow me, we'll get started. As the diners will all be having the tasting menu, each contestant will cook for all of the customers. They will have just four hours to prep their dishes for service. Lorna will be in charge of the starter. Orkney scallops with crab, served with apple dashi, a Japanese broth. So we've taken a scallop here, we've actually cut it with a zigzag knife, just so we get a little bit of texture on one side. We're going to put that into a very hot pan. This is a dish that our chefs can struggle with. It's a very difficult dish to get absolutely bang on. The most critical part of this dish is making sure that those scallops are cooked perfectly. OK. As well as frying the scallops, 22-year-old copywriter Lorna will have to prepare the crab and assemble the other elements of the dish. Over the top of that, we're going to add this pasta sheet, which we made from scallop. Now, it's a very challenging dish to start off with the menu, and I think that will kind of set the tone for the rest of the meal. A few marigold flowers. So there's the dashi, which will be poured at the table, and that's your finished dish, the scallop. That's not the kind of food that I would normally cook, so... No. But I'll give it my best shot. Okay. Well, I hope you learn lots. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure I will. Her first...
first job is to extract the meat from three fresh Dorset crabs. I have picked a crab before, but they're very strict, so you have to make sure that every bit comes out. Dentist Imran is cooking the first of two fish courses, Cornish mackerel, which will be served both fried and as tartar, with a carrot lattice, carrot puree, and a citrus dressing. Pour the mackerel into a little bit of oil, it's a cold pan, and then we're going to cook it on a high heat. If the mackerel comes up overcooked, then we're not going to serve it, which is obviously going to set them back and, and cost them a lot of time. And then we're just going to char the skin so we get it's a slight kind of smoky flavour. Pop your plate onto the decks. The wow factor in this dish is in the presentation. So this is a carrot and ginger puree. You want about <laughs> a centimetre between the lines. OK. The plating on this is quite intricate, so if we don't get the plating absolutely spot on, it can look a bit of a mess. That looks incredible already. We've got some sesame seeds and crispy onions, some mizuna leaves, and that will be your mackerel dish for service. Feeling confident? <laughs> Not right now, but I will be. <laughs> yeah, I cook mackerel at home. Never ever like this. Or use the <laughs> proper big boy blowtorch uh, as well. It looks like my, my blowtorch look ridiculous uh, at home. I'm most uh, nervous about putting on the puree and having it spinning. Um, definitely see some issues there, especially with shaky hands. So I'm just trying to just pipe on. with some degree of um, elegance. DJ Lindsay is in charge of the third tasting menu course, roasted sea bass with salsify, mushrooms, Cavano Nero, and a red wine sauce. For our sea bass skin side down, when we've got a, an ingredient as special as a wild bass, we want to really kind of make sure that we get that skin nice and crispy, we keep the flesh nice and moist. We're going to take our salsify. So this has already been cooked lightly. This course has got the most cooked elements on it, so it's a real tough one. This one is all cooked to order, so it's going to be very challenging. It's going to be a lot of people ordering at the same time, so you're going to have to keep yourself busy with all these pots and pans. This here is a, a puree of lemon. We're just going to spread that across, and that's going to give us a strong flavour. Put the mushrooms on there. Pieces of cavolo nero. And then a set mushroom puree. Very intensely flavoured. And that'll be your sea bass dish. You happy with that? Yeah, I mean, it looks so tasty, even without trying it. Yeah, it looks great. I think it's going to be fast and furious. If I'm OK with the multitasking, and as a drummer, I should be, hopefully we'll be OK. Famous last words. <laughs> Crucial to Lindsay's dish is the filleting of the wild sea bass. It doesn't want to be filleted, I can tell you that. These bones are really tough. Like, it's a proper some elbow grease having to go in there. So, Shauna, you're going to be in charge of our pork dish. It's the main meat course of the menu, so we're really kind of building up to this course, so we need to make sure that we deliver. Shauna's on barbecued Iberico pork with spelt, roasted carrot and onion, carrot ketchup and crackling. So the pork itself has been seared on the barbecue, so we get a nice kind of smoky charcoal flavour. In this pan here, we've got some spelt, and we just warm that up with a little bit of pork sauce. Nice spoonful of that, just off centre. Our carrot ketchup. Our roasted onion. Now, when it comes to carving the pork, 
We need to make sure we cut against the grain. A nice long strokes. So one of our carrots. Just lean that on the pork. And here we've got a nice stick of pork crackling. <laughs> and then our sauce. I'm just going to pass it through a small sieve. And then that will be served at the table. So you happy you can deliver that? Yes, sir. I think so. I mean, I'm sweating already. I feel like I'm getting a suntan. I've only been here 20 minutes. Shauna's prep starts with some hard graft. Oh, my God, my elbow is killing me already, and I'm five carrots down. It's meticulous, you know? You always think that you've got lots of time to do this stuff, but actually, there's a good three hours prep before the dish. You even start to cook the dish. Wine marketing manager Jamie is cooking the first of two desserts, passion fruit souffle with pistachio ice cream and white chocolate sauce. So obviously, souffle is one of those dishes that a lot of people would fear. There's a lot of scope for it to go wrong. Just wants to hold its shape nicely okay. and add that to our passion fruit curd. During service, the souffles must be cooked to order, so Jamie will need to work fast and keep a cool head. From the center? Yeah. At that kind of angle, push down towards the edge so we get a nice flat top. And then we want to just run our thumb just around the edge. So that's ready to go in the oven. Souffle is a very volatile dish. We undenied whether we should actually give this to an amateur, whether it's fair to give this to an amateur. Make sure that the, the edges are nice and straight. I don't want any cracks on the edges. And then our pistachio ice cream. So this is how they'll serve the white chocolate sauce in the restaurant. Make it nice and indulgent. It looks so elegant, but the flavor's huge. Mm. Really delicious stuff, that. Yeah. Happy with that? Confident? Yeah. Quietly. Good. Jamie's first task is to prepare the passion fruit curd. It's got to be very precise, so it's got to be the exact 140 grams, otherwise it'll all go horribly wrong. So, yeah, just trying to get it precise without chucking it everywhere. Music teacher Giovanna is making the second dessert, a mirror-glazed manjari chocolate mousse with malt meringue, milk-solid crumb, hazelnut gel and creme fraiche sorbet. The mousse itself has got a really shiny glaze on it, so nothing can touch that glaze. It has to be absolutely immaculate. So when you're plating this dish, you've got to be really, really careful because any kind of blemishes on there means that we're going to have to start the plating again. Yeah, sure. And then around the edge of that, we're going to add a little bit of this crumble. And again, be careful here not to drop any on top of the, yeah. the chocolate. OK, and then the, the next element is this malt meringue which we're just going to break into shards. We add a little bit of salt on top of the glaze. Hazelnut liqueur and roasted hazelnut puree. Just gives us a slightly boozy element. <laughs> and then we're going to finish it with a creme fraiche sorbet. So we need a, a nice quinella of that sorbet. Just sat on the side. And that'll be our finished dish. I've got no idea if I can do this justice. Um, I hope so. It's so aesthetically beautiful, it's perfectly balanced. Yeah, if I can do this, I'll be really proud of myself. With just an hour until the lunch sitting, it's all systems go in the kitchen. The hands are shaking a little bit already, which isn't ideal for when it comes to plating up the circle. <laughs> Feel the real buzz in the kitchen. Yeah, everyone's quite energetic, quite up for it. Um, so it's a real buzz that kind of gets you going a bit. It's an excited nervousness, you know? It's like going in to have your baby in the hospital. It's like you're excited, but you're a little bit fearful, but it's a positive fear. OK, guys, first guests are starting to arrive. We need to be ready for service in 25 minutes. Make sure your mise en place is finished. We're getting set up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Steve grows his food is great. I mean, if our six can actually just hold their own in that big, tough kitchen, they've done amazingly well. 
Steve understands the pressure because he won MasterChef himself. But I've got to say, this is one big ask. OK, guys, first check-in. Two tasting menu, OK? First course up, Scallop. You ready, Lorna? Yes, Chef. Start working that. And then Samaj, two tasting menu. And one more, we've got Samaj, four tasting menu. So eight all together. So eight, yeah, eight. eight together. Lorna's scallops with crab and apple dashi is up first. The pressure's on. Make sure the crinkle side is the side that goes down first. Let's okay. quickly flip them over. Okay, you can see there you've put them the wrong way down. Yeah. Looking good. Just go quickly, get them out of the pan. Let's get the rest of your garnish ready and up to the pass. While Lorna assembles her other elements, Imran is still trying to perfect his puree spirals. They're looking a little bit better. Getting there is just trying to keep that steady hand and trying to get the circle just a bit, bit more elegant. <laughs> so... Keep that one as your guide. You've got to be nice and even like that. These ones are a bit, uh, a bit of a mess. Lorna must now work quickly to plate all eight starters to Steve's precise standards. Behind these eight, we've got another four, OK? We need to start picking up the pace. Yep. The next bit is your uh, scallop pasta. That's it. Really need to pick up the pace. We need to go a little bit faster than this. Yep. I'm OK, I think. Stress. Coriander to go on now. Yeah. OK, service. Right, take two, take two. OK, we're working the next four now, yeah? Yeah. I think I just need to get a bit quicker and we'll be fine. OK, and we're standing by on eight mackerel. Yeah, sure. So, let's start moving, OK? Eight plates away. Yeah. Eight plates away. Yeah. Imran's up next. His mackerel must be pan-fried so that it's just cooked before being finished with a blowtorch. Yeah! I have to use this awesome blowtorch. <laughs> I've been looking forward to it all day. OK, Imran, after this, you've got four mackerel away. Yes, yeah, chef. So we need to step up the pace a bit now. But Steve's not happy with the mackerel. Some of it's getting a little bit over. I think we have to do another couple again, to be honest. Hey, Ryan, I'm going to cook those two bits of mackerel again. Yep. You're going to get them with the plating, OK? Yes. That's the dressing there. Just give that a good one. shake and get that on. Imran's hey, struggling quite a lot with the mackerel dish. It has to be played with precision and then, obviously, cooking the fish precisely as well. Getting it all ready on the plate at the same time is proving quite problematic. This is more difficult than I could ever have imagined. Honestly, this is mind-blowing stuff. Over at the pass, Lorna's last dishes are being plated up. OK, it's looking good. More confident with this batch. Good. Do you know what? It's actually really good fun. OK, that's it. Last bit of dashi, very good. Yeah. Service! Well done. Thank you very much. Set Thank yourself you. down and uh, <sighs> oh. relax. I didn't make any mistakes and I didn't make a fool out of myself. And I got a handshake at the end, so I think I did a good job. So hot in here. <laughs> Has my makeup melted off my face? A little bit. Not my finest hour. <laughs> That's a very, very pretty and accomplished dish. Well done, Lorna. The smokiness of the scallops and the sourness of the apples all together with the sweetness of the crab, Lorna's done very, very well. Very, very well. Back in the kitchen, Imran is falling behind. This is another level. <laughs> it's really tricky. Imran, how long are you going to be on these six mackerel? I think 12 minutes, Chef. 12 minutes? Yeah. OK, we need to go quicker than that. 
with all the diners having the same tasting menu, the whole service is being held up by the mackerel course. OK, Imran, this is taking a bit too long now. I'm going to put Hamie on here to give you a bit of a push so we can get these plates out because people are waiting here. Focus on cooking, yeah? Yeah. I'm feeling a bit stressed. I'm quite conscious that a few tables have been waiting a little while already and they're still a little way away from being finished on the mackerel. Slightly disappointed because pride always comes into it, but still bizarrely smiling, but just trying to do my best. OK, are we nearly ready on these? Yes, just about OK, we need to really give it a big push on the last bit, yeah? OK, keep them nice and neat and tidy. OK, service. Let's just give them a quick wipe. So, took a bit of time, but they all look good. That was a tough dish, no? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much. What a privilege. I've learned some things today, mainly to get a crack on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Still reeling from it a little bit, if I'm honest. My mind is spinning like those plates. Um, I did need help and whatnot, but you have to bear in mind, this is a world beyond what I know. I did what I could. It's a beautiful dish, but Imran is far too slow. I like it. It's very, very subtle, good textures, good flavours, lots and lots of hard work. Lindsay's up next with her sea bass and red wine sauce. OK, Lindsay, you're standing by on eight bass now, so get your pans okay. on, get them nice and hot. Yep. It's all going to kick off for you. All the elements of her dish are cooked at the last minute, requiring her to juggle multiple pans at the same time. Right now, I've got two lots of four on. So, you know, quite a lot. Already, I'm cooking for more portions than I've ever cooked before. Where's Chef? I think the butter's too hot. Have I burned this one? Because I think the butter's too hot. Yeah, it is. I'll put it in. Oh, that's a bit burnt, there. Yeah. It seems to reach temperature really, really quickly. Should yeah, I be using... Yeah, these pans are for your bass, aren't they? Oh, so, sorry. And I don't want you to use these the silver pans for your sauce. Sorry, okay? sorry. You need a bit more oil in your fish pans. Yep. The heat on it is pretty raging, yeah, so yeah, just kind yeah. of... Put off to the side if we need to. Yeah. I think the fish is looking all right. It's really difficult to regulate the heat on this thing. OK, so this one's a bit burnt, yeah. so you're going to have to get another two on because we're going to redo a table for two, OK? OK. There's a lot going on. I've stacked it on the first couple, but... Hopefully, I'll forgive me. It's all right. Plenty of time to redeem yourself. On the other side of the kitchen, Shauna's gearing up for her meat course. OK, Shauna, we're away on eight pork. Yes, Chef. Her challenge is to perfectly barbecue the pork to medium rare over hot coals, roast the veg and prepare the crackling strips. OK, Shauna, how long do you need for the eight pork? Two more minutes, Chef. Got vegetables Go out up. the past now, are we? Yes, sir. Meat against the grain. I just need to be sure that I'm doing against this Against right. the grain, yeah. Yeah, the grain's going that way, so straight through there. Yeah, Push fingers. Yeah. Lovely. Perfect. Yeah. Meanwhile, Lindsay's first orders of sea bass are finally on the pass. Plating up is just all about speed. You need to keep everything hot. There's no chance to just nuke something in the microwave here. Try and get the garnish a little bit tighter in. Oh, OK. Sorry. OK, we're looking really good. Let's keep it going quickly. OK, sauce, uh, not on the fish skin, just a little bit in amongst the garnish, OK? They look really good. Next one's just like that. We need four more and we need it a lot quicker, OK? OK, service. OK, come on. Yep. No time to stand in the mire, innit? It's all a learning curve. Yeah. You're just going to make that curve as steep a curve as possible, I think. Oh, 
Mm. She's crisped up the skin beautifully. The salsify is divine. The sauce is divine. It's a classic. And that's good for Lindsay, I think. But also show her how to be able to get a time is absolutely right. Shauna's Iberico pork with spelt risotto is next. I don't believe it, I'm not going to have enough. Sorry? I'm enough for five. Put it all back in the pan and we'll get a bit more. Okay. I misjudged the portion size, so I think I'm meticulous at this level of restaurant, so I've got to get it right. Okay, here we go. Keep the root end of the onion into the centre, and then it comes out more at a point. OK, that's it. It's looking good. OK, you're doing a great job. Well done. Keep it going. Thank you, Chef. Everything looks nice and precise. OK, service. Sean, they look excellent. Well done. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Chef. I am having a blast. In fact, I could do this all day. I mean, I'd love to be doing 20 more dishes, but let's see what the guys in the restaurant say. Mm. Wow, look at that crackling. Lovely looking dish. Sean has done well. Oh, wonderful puree. And the spell. I love the flavours there as well. It's very, very close, very, very subtle. I think Sean has done a good job. Lastly, it's desserts. OK, guys, on pastry, we've got the first six desserts away, three souffle, three chocolate. Yes, Chef. Make sure you communicate with each other, come up at the same time. Giovanna's dessert depends upon precisely executing the chocolate mirror glaze. Any blemish or bubble and the mirror effect will be ruined. Very nice. Is that all right? That's even. Timing is crucial. Any delays and Jamie's souffles will collapse. As soon as they go in, I'll start plating. OK. And, okay. Then, and when you take them out, I'll do the ice cream. OK. It's going to be hot in the mouth stuff when the first souffle comes out of the oven. Just seeing it risen or not risen will be quite a nerve-wracking moment. With the souffles in the oven, Giovanna must quickly and carefully plate all five elements of her manjari mousse, making sure the mirror glaze stays pristine at all times. Oh, no. I've messed one of them up, so I'm going to have to do it again, but I think it's going to be OK. I just dropped a little bit of a crumb on it, so it ruined the mirror glaze. So I just have to do it again, because you can't ruin the mirror glaze. How long do you reckon on those um, souffles? So the souffles are another two minutes, and they might need another minute. OK. OK, with the meringue, try not to have them quite so yeah. big. Yeah, Sorry. OK, smaller. And not all the way around. I'm going to leave an opening where we're going to put the sorbet, OK? Right, OK. It's the moment of truth for Jamie's souffles. OK, you good to go? Yeah. Yeah, these ones look really good. Thanks. OK, so a little bit of the crumb on top and then icing sugar. Are we ready on the chocolates? Giovanna has just the creme fraiche sorbet to add. OK, we really need to go. But she's struggling to get it into the required quenelle shape. Is that good enough? OK, it's a little bit big. Giovanna, how are you looking? Hi. Souffle is dying over there. No, it's too hard. Oh, these critters! Oh! How's that? It's okay. Yeah. Well done. Oh. Oh, 
the order's come and it's bang, you've got to create souffle really quickly. So suddenly you feel the pressure, like a punch in the face. And um, yeah, it was just really interesting to see that and experience it. Passion fruit, pistachio, white chocolate. Good job. Whoa, Jamie's done well, hasn't he? Because that passion fruit is superb. Plating was so hard. It was so fiddly. It took a little while, but we got there eventually. Oh, mate. Oh, I'm so in love with that. Not too sweet. Really luxurious. Mmm. I thought my soup flavor was good, but nicely made as well. I love that little very, very fine coating of the mirror chocolate across the top. Well done, brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you, you got for it again. It's a difficult technique, hasn't it? So. I'm glad I've learned it. Yeah, yeah, good. Finally. You can just do it all the way through the competition. Now. Yeah, that's all I do. After three gruelling hours, lunch service is finally over. Tough service. Only thing I could do more than one of those a week. Ultimately, they've done a good job. It's taken us a little bit longer to get there than we would have hoped. Talk about a baptism of fire. Never been in a kitchen at all. So to sort of learn so much in one day was just a great experience. My hands smell of mackerel. <laughs> My back aches. I'm exhausted, but yet I've had a great time. I'm absolutely buzzing right now. Today has further energized me. I don't think you can go into that kitchen and not be inspired. It's a fantastic experience for anyone. Six courses, all cooked by amateurs. The first time in a professional kitchen, and what a baptism of fire it has been. For the best of them, it should have been a real injection of confidence. They're going to need it. They're coming back to the Master Chef kitchen now, and we've got a big decision to make. Welcome back. Good to see you after all your hard work in the professional kitchen. What we're hoping is that you found inspiration from your time with Steve Groves and we want to know what you've learned from it and how that is going to improve your cooking. Surrounding Greg and I is an extraordinary larder. A larder packed full of beautiful ingredients and we want you to choose whatever you like and cook for us one plate of food that is worthy of gracing a restaurant table. Ladies and gentlemen, choose wisely and cook well. Up you come. The contestants have 10 minutes to choose their ingredients. Today's larder has a Scottish theme, with a choice of venison, grouse, and a selection of seafood as well as haggis, black pudding, cheeses, wild mushrooms, and a wide range of fruit, vegetables, herbs, and spices. I'm trying not to take everything. I mean, that's kind of the, the difficulty, is seeing all these amazing ingredients and trying to get it down to just one dish. Yeah, I'm a bit nervous about this one, because it's a lot of stuff I don't normally cook, but I do want to push myself. Something's in my head, ticking along. I'm going to go for a sweet. So, yeah, just making sure that everything is here. Wow. What a bounty some of you have. At the end of this, one of you is going home. One hour, 20 minutes. Let's cook. The professional kitchen was a fantastic experience for me. It's not about having plates flying everywhere. Even when we were dicing up a mango, you know, it's uh, making sure your cubes are all perfectly in the same size. It's about precision. It's about making sure you do everything properly. Jamie, what's your dish today? 
Um, so, obviously, I've been inspired by Scotland going up to the bench there and seeing some great produce. So I'm doing hand-roasted venison with some neeps and tatties and a haggis crumb. A little bit of whiskey going into the dish just to give it that real Scottish heathery flavour. Jamie, why did it say Scotland to you? You're not Scottish, are you? Well, I'm Northern Irish, so it's kind of, we're kind of brethren across the water there, so I got quite inspired. Saw the heather, saw the deer, you know, got visions of the highlands with, uh, you know, the mist rolling in and the purple hills <laughs> and, the, and the stag up there looking over his country. I'm glad you're inspired by Scotland. I'm looking forward to the full kilt and bagpipes. Cool. Thanks, Greg. Jamie's ideas are sound. However, the venison is cooking in the water bath first, then he's going to brown it. OK. But he's going to have to make sure that is cooked absolutely perfectly, and I mean properly seasoned. You've had 15 minutes already. Potting up, on it? Love the competition. There's absolutely no room for error. I just have to cook my absolute best. It has to look perfect, it has to taste perfect. Everyone is exceptional. So one little sip up and that's it. You're out. See ya. Giovanna, there's lots of things I want to ask you, but you seem to be doing a dessert, yet you seem to have a pumpkin. Yeah, I have a pumpkin. I'm going to make a little sweet pumpkin and vanilla puree. I'm doing quite a lot of hazelnuts. Goes quite well with chocolate. It's a nice colour. <laughs> What are you making? I'm making a chocolate mousse with some caramelised pears, a little hazelnut crumb, uh, a yoghurt sorbet and a little pumpkin puree. How do you feel after your time in the pro kitchen? I feel really inspired. I was really glad that I was on dessert because it's not really my thing, which is why I've chosen to do one today. Did you have the, chi the shiny chocolate dessert? Oh, my word. That was divine. I don't think this will have quite the wow factor, but I'm hoping that I'm going to take some of their plating elements prettiness on a plate. Hopefully. Giovanna's got lots of process going on. She's got a chocolate mousse, which needs to set. She's got a sorbet, which has to make sure that she churns properly. And she's got to make sure that a pumpkin puree falls off a bench and goes onto the floor so she can't use it. Chocolate and pumpkin? Back's aching, mind is spinning like those plates, but I feel ready, I feel focused. I'm really excited as well. Can't wait to show John and Greg what I can actually do. Imran, how did you find the Pro Kitchen? I found it incredibly tricky. It gave me nightmares at the time. I'm still getting nightmares about that uh, plating up, but I just tried my best. What's your dish? Poached quince with a uh, frangipan tart and I'm serving that with a creme anglaise. What do you want for your food now? It's very hard for food magpie like myself. I really like all different styles. I would like to refine it a little bit more, but still being all about the taste. Yes, he's making pastry. Yes, he's making frangipan, and he's poaching a quince. But this is knockout week. Could be perfect. Could be, but it sounds a bit safe. You are halfway. 40 gone, 40 left. Smells good in here, guys. Today, I want to show John and Greg that I have learned from the restaurant. I've got some pretty out there ideas, but they are pretty out there. And maybe I think an invention test with some beautiful produce maybe isn't the time to do it. What are you making? The fallow deer with some pickled blackberries. I'm doing a crumb with toasted hazelnuts and the black pudding with some glazed carrots, camelo nero, parsnip puree and parsnip crisp. OK, so are you, on a bit of a, are you on a bit of a mission now, do you think? Or? I'm doing fairly classical cooking today, but it's that thing about you've got to learn the rules to break the rules. Yeah, Heston can only do the crazy stuff he can do because, because he, he first can... learned how to do all of the disciplines. Exactly. <laughs> If she can pull off this classic, I'll be really, really impressed. But that means the venison's got to be cooked beautifully, the vegetables have got to be sweet and really well seasoned, the sauce has got to be really robust, and the parsnip puree, silky smooth but bold with parsnips, and the crisps across the top. Ooh, 
invention tests, it's just, I'm shaking like a leaf, you know, because you've got to think on your feet and then you've got to do it against the clock and present something restaurant standard, you know, this time around. So I'm a bit, yeah, scared. <laughs>
discussing this dish differently. But such small margins are what divides the OK from the good, isn't it? I do feel a bit kind of deflated. The standard is so high and everyone else's food looks so good, so it really comes down to the smallest little things. Lindsay, up you come, please. Lindsay's cooked roasted venison with pickled blackberries, a blackberry reduction, pureed parsnips, Cavallonero, carrots, and a toasted hazelnut and black pudding crumb served with a venison jus. Lindsay, that's an outstanding plate of food. Really? The venison is cooked to perfection. Thank you. The puree is beautiful. The blackberries work fantastically with the venison. Attention to detail. For an amateur cook, you should be very, very proud. Oh, wow. I really am, yeah. Throughout this competition, Lindsay, you've always been very experimental, very, very adventurous. Today, you went classic, and it suits you. It's lovely. Thanks. I love the way you've cooked the venison, but what really impresses me is the quality of your sauce, which just enhances the venison flavour up another notch. I can't believe that that just happened, actually. Tom Kitchen, for goodness sake. Imran has created a poached quince and frangipan tart, compressed quince, hazelnut crumb, and served with creme anglaise. I think the use of quince was inspired and to poach it as well as you have and take the time. It comes lovely, honey, sweet, rich, but the tart itself is just not good. The pastry's not cooked properly. It's very almondy. The anglaise is too thin. OK. The best part of the dish is the quince. You've poached it well. I love the flavours. I love the idea. I wish it could have been executed better. Yeah, me too. Rationale sometimes just goes out the window. So another five minutes here, a bit less flapping there, perhaps. But that's the way it played out today, so yeah. Giovanna has cooked caramelized pears with chocolate mousse, served with a hazelnut and sable crumb sweet pumpkin puree and a yoghurt sorbet. I'm really happy that the pear is poached and it's cooked properly. The hazelnut and the chocolate works well. But then all of a sudden there's like pumpkin and I the pumpkin, I don't really understand what it's doing there. Mm -hmm. I think your flavours are really, really good. My issue here is one of texture. Right. You've put three very soft things on a plate. Your pears are poached really nicely. You've got a decent chocolate mousse. I really love that yogurt sorbet. But they all don't belong together. It's really tough. I think I just made a bad choice on some of this stuff, and some of it was great, which is good. Jamie has made sous vide and pan-roasted venison with roasted potatoes, turnip puree, roasted shallots and haggis crumb with a whiskey and venison sauce. It sounds like a celebration of Scotland. Let's see if it is a celebration. That was the aim, so fingers crossed.
the flavours kind of worked in a crazy kind of way. I actually quite enjoyed the pepperness of the haggis. The venison was cooked very well. The sauce, I can taste the whiskey in it. It's not too overpowering. It's got potential. I'm with Tom on this. I think it's a great start as a dish, but I think you can work on it and I think it can become really, really special. I can't pick fault with it, but I think what would really make that come alive is a richer, deeper sauce. I'm constantly thinking about what John's going to say, what Greg's going to say, and I think that's throwing me off slightly. So I need to be more confident in myself. Shauna has made a duo of pears poached in Rioja and port with blue cheese mascarpone cream and a walnut and pecan crumb treacle gingerbread and a red wine granita. Just these bits on here, Sean, up cinnamon stick, star anise. The problem is that not everybody knows you can't eat them. The pear is poached really, really well. It's not too strong, it's not too sweet. After that, I don't really know what to say after that, really. Um, the lavender, the cinnamon, the blue cheese, the granita, I mean... Whew. I'm really sorry, it didn't work for me. OK. The problem is it doesn't all go together. It's just too confused. The blue cheese, I honestly cannot make my mind up whether I like it or dislike it. I would probably leave it out. Gutted. What can I say? It's Tom Kitchen, and I've been following him for years, have his books and stuff. Obviously, it looked maybe prettier than it tasted, but there you go. Thank you very much indeed for your hard work. At the start of this, we said that one of you will be leaving us. What we'd like to do is ask you to step outside and we'll call you back in as soon as we made our decision. Off you go. Thank you. Thanks. Tom, pleasure. Thank you very Thank much you indeed. Very much. Thanks for your help. Love to see you. Good luck, guys. Thanks Thank for you. having me. Thank you. Yeah. Tom's critical. You'd expect him to be, wouldn't you? He's going to judge everybody by his own standards. Uh, this is knockout week. We are looking for finesse. We're looking for our champion. Tom. He loved Lindsay. He absolutely loved Lindsay. He was in raptures about it. The way she'd cooked the meat, the quality of her sauce, her choice of accompaniments. I think Lindsay did a great job. A great, great job. Lindsay goes straight through. Jamie had a quality round. There were few faults on, on his plate. I mean, there were suggestions on how Jamie's plate could be better. I'd like a bit more seasoning, but you have to say it was a good plate of food. Giovanna's a good cook, that's for sure. But there are issues with her plate. For me, all I wanted was, was some texture, something a little bit firmer to put all those soft things on. Lorna's problem was obvious, and that was that her pasta was far too thick. All she had to do was roll that pasta out a little bit thinner because the filling was sound, the sauce had flavour, and the garnish was really tasty. Lorna and Giovanna didn't present us with perfect dishes, but I think their food was actually good enough. We've got two people here in danger of, of going home. Shauna had some ideas that Tom Kitchen thought were unusual. It just didn't work. It's Shauna throwing so many things at the one plate. It's a cacophony. Imran serves the quince and frangipan tart. What a wonderful idea. Unfortunately, the only part of the dish that was any good was that poached quince. What happened to Imran today? When you've been given some negative feedback, you do start to question your level of skill and you think, maybe it is my time to go, maybe I'm out of my league. But if I get through, then tomorrow's another day. Pretty tough day. Gave my all. Unfortunately, not up to par. <laughs> Just don't know what to say. Don't know what to say. Yeah, hopefully not going home. 
I think one of these contestants here has just had a drink from the last chance saloon. Thank you all very, very much for your efforts. It's been a tough decision, but we've made that decision. The contestant leaving us is Shauna. Okay. Shauna, lovely well to done, have guys. met you. Lovely to have met you. Deflated and a bit, you know, a bit upset that I couldn't have gone further. I am really thrilled to have got this far. Yeah, you know, it's given me the confidence to go forward now. I'd love to have my own little boutique catering company. And so yeah, it's definitely given me the confidence to pursue my dream. Someone like Tom Kitchen. Oh, sorry, I still can't believe he said that. Ridiculously happy. Can't stop smiling. I'm thrilled that I'm still here. And I think it's one of those things where you just have to look forward to the next step. And you did it. Oh, and you did. Yeah, it just feels really exciting. It feels like you're getting into the, the real meat of the competition. So I'm um, excited to see what comes. Final 10 is insane. But I know it's going to get harder. I know it's going to get more exciting. I'm really, really pleased to be here still. Done. Positives, I'm through to the next round. <laughs> so I can't ask for more than that at the moment. Uh, onwards to the next round and I'll, I'll try and be better. No, I will be better. Next time, the final ten are back for the last challenge of the knockouts. All that stands between them and a semi-final place <laughs> is one exceptional plate of food. It tastes great, it looks great, it smells great, it really, really works. That's just absolutely delicious.